Hey, I'm Kim. Quick video today, just about Capture 121 and the update that they have just given it. They've added in some great new features, which I want to talk through very quickly here. So this won't be a long video, but I just wanted to demonstrate it because I think they are going to be very useful for a lot of people out there. Uh, well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, let's start with the import tab. So this is the normal import tab that you get and you can see the images are there and you can go through and you can uh, pick whatever one you want just by hitting here. You know, you can select uh, a few of them in a row. You can pick here, but it's never quite been the fastest way of doing it. And I know a lot of people rely on other tools like Photo Mechanic to go through and pick before the import, which is all good. So obviously Capture One have taken the feedback from all their users and much like Fujidu have listened and actually put some improvements in place, which is fantastic to see. Now, not only like in the past, you could zoom in here and get a bigger preview of what's going on, which did make life easier. Capture One have included a new viewer, uh, which is just accessible by clicking here. And as you can see, it says large preview. So let's click it. And there we go. Large preview of an underexposed GFX 100 shot. Uh, there we go. That's a slightly better one to look at. So you can see full screen here. Uh, now, if I wanted to pick it, I can just tap the space bar. Um, that selects it. Tap the space bar. Deselects it. So now I can quickly go through the images I want to bring in. Uh, let's bring in that one. And yeah, we bring in that one. And maybe that one. Uh, so you can go through them very quickly and see in full screen what's going on here. Uh, there isn't a rating applicable to them yet, but there are picks applicable to them. So I think that's a great step forward in what's going on. Uh, still no keywords on import, but we'll keep badgering them about that and maybe they'll add it just for me and I'll feel all special, which would be great, wouldn't it? But anyway, just a, a very quick way of doing it. Um, the keyboard, you can also click S to select and A to deselect if you want and then just import all four images. Now I've uh, already imported these and done some work on them uh, because these are slightly older shots. Uh, I've been using Capture One Beta for a little bit as testing. So it's been great to see it coming out finally. Uh, it'll be exciting to see. So that's the importer. We've got new speed, uh, new viewing options, which should help your digital asset management, uh, at least on import, a little bit more. Uh, moving on from there, uh, I'm going to just touch on Pro Colors because Capture One have continued to add support for more cameras in Pro Colors. Uh, notably, Fuji is missing from that. So uh, I did ask about that, obviously, and they said, and I quote, Fuji already have such good colors that we don't really see the point in us trying to improve upon them. So because they're very good, Capture One don't see that they can make them any better. So yay, Fuji! Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was nice to hear, I suppose, seeing as I shoot a lot of Fuji files, obviously. So, um, yeah, next, uh, and what I think is probably the biggest thing in there is a new setting over here, which the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you might have seen, called Style Brushes. Um, you've got custom style brushes and built-in style brushes. Uh, the built-in style brushes are just a range of brushes that Capture One have uh, pre-built and installed in on the system for you. Uh, very well named out and very easy to use. So I could pick something like, um, let's go and pick a, a burn so we can just burn some of these shadows down. And you can see there that the brush is kind of large for me because I've been using it that way. So I'm just going to hold uh, control, uh, yeah, control option on my keyboard. I have to look, because I do this automatically. I have to look here. I'm just going to bring uh, the hardness down a bit and the size down a bit, just to match. And I'm just going to paint in some of the shadow details here, just to add a bit of burn in here and there. And we can see it's just creating a little bit of that. Uh, I can then maybe go and do some dodging. So I might want to just bring in uh, some of this area here and just bring up some of that area there. Uh, maybe just bring in a bit of this area here. Uh, and you can see it's starting to build up a very subtle uh, contrast into the image. So if I turn those both off, you can kind of see where we are. And if I turn them both on, you can see them coming back in. So it's just adding a bit of structure in there. You see they're named here correctly. Um, my brush size has remained constant with them both here. But if I want to change the brush size, that one to be big. And then I go back to dark, you see it's returned back to the small or the setting that was on dark in the first place. Uh, likewise, if I go back to this brush, it remains back there. Uh, if you right click on the screen, you can see brush with layer is ticked and that's what enables that, which I think is pretty special. Uh, so that's the brushes and you can really pick anything you want in there. Uh, they have a good range of the general brushes that you're going to want to use day to day. But can you add your own? Well, yes, you can, because that's what the custom style brushes are all about. Um, I've just done one called Skin Soften here, just to uh, maybe 
soften down skin of certain uh, people who would like to have a little detail removed, particularly if you're shooting on a high megapixel image and if you're going to be in close and using a very sharp lens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just adds a little bit of niceness to the image in there. Uh, you can see the adjustments that are made. Oh, again, this is also named skin and that's the size of the tool and all that. Uh, so uh, you can see it's just a little bit of brightness, a little bit less contrast. The highlights are pushed and the shadows are pushed a tiny bit there. Just again, work with the contrast, clarity and structure is down and nothing else has been ch changed at all in that one. So you can see what that does there. If I turn it off, you can see the change it's made. And if I, uh, oops, turn it back on, you can see the images that are there between off and on. So little subtle differences, but that's what we really like when we're editing an image. Now I'm not gonna go into too much editing here because I don't really want to get into that. Uh, but say, uh, yeah, just for example, we'll just do one more here and we'll just uh, bring the brightness down a little bit on a brush. Uh, I'm gonna actually make that brush a bit bigger because I'm gonna do just in here. I'm just going to layer in this down a little bit because I think it could do with it. Uh, I could just drag a Gradio filter over the top, I suppose, do the same kind of thing and then mask out the hair and that kind of stuff. But this is probably a little bit easier. And because of the flow, it gives you nice control over what's going on as well. So you can really get in on that as best you like. So there we go. So let's have a look at that and see how that worked out. And as you can see, it's brought it down quite nicely. So if I just tap Y, you'll see there's the before and after shots. So I think that's pretty evident. You've got add a camera, which already looks pretty decent. And then just whatever grade you want, which is Capture One's new brush tool. Oh yeah, of course, uh, if you wanted to save your own uh, custom tool here, I forgot to tell you how to do that. Well, like everything else in Capture One, just the ellipses, the three little dots here, uh, you just gotta go and save style brush. And then you can, it'll show you all the changes uh, that you've made to it. And you can just tick or untick whatever you want to have in on the brush, hit save, and then you'll be able to name it and save it. And you can see I've got skin softener saved in there just today. Fantastic, uh, I'm gonna cancel that. So that is the new brush tools. So here's another image. Uh, you can see just the before and after there, again with the GFX 100. So, uh, you know, you can really uh, get in with that. Uh, you know, you zoom up to 200%, see the fine detail in it. It's really good that way. You go up to 400%, really good that way. And there seems to be suddenly now a bit of extra space that there wasn't before, but yep, we can go all the way into five, six, seven, eight, nine, all up to 16 if you really need to. So if you were shooting a, I suppose, uh, very high density sensor, uh, this is just 102 megapixel as you can see, but there's me and little camera hang off the side there, which would be probably improbable for you guys to tell. I just knew it was there, but there's the archway of the door. And remember this is 1600% zoomed in on a 5K monitor. So you can kind of get an idea of the detail. Completely pointless for a portrait, uh, I would say. But if you're doing some more things like landscapes or cityscape shots or shooting on a higher res camera than the GFX, it can be very handy to have if you really want to get to fine detailing or just checking focus or for whatever reason, possibly a little gimmicky, but I'm sure there are some people out there which have been raving for that one and I'd be happy to have it. Um, I generally don't go much above 300% myself for what I shoot because it's mostly people and things and I don't really need to get that close in Capture One. Um, but yeah, it's great that it's there. Uh, I think it's another way that Capture One have added something simple because they've listened to their customers. And I hope that trend continues hugely. Uh, they do seem to make some changes for the good and that's all positive. So other than that, Capture One have added support for a range of new cameras. Uh, for us Fuji shooters, they have the XE4 and the GFX 100S. Uh, I'll leave a list of the, all the cameras in the description below, which is just underneath the like and subscribe button. If you're there, you may as well click that. And that's it. That's the basics that Capture One have updated with version 21. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.